everyone, welcome. I'm Lydia and I make patterns and tutorials. I'm very excited to present to you my newest pattern, the Meadow Overalls. They are super cute. I wear them pretty much every day. I have a number of samples. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm gonna show you how to sew this garment. Today we are making style A of the Meadow overalls featuring a continuous bias binding with a center front zipper. The bias binding construction is a little more advanced so I have a style B which is a bit more beginner friendly. Please read the read first file for help with printing, sizing materials, adjustments, and cutting layouts and I advise creating a quick toile without pockets to ensure that the fit is how you want it. Now let's sew! After you cut everything, see my overlock guide for which areas to overlock. Also note that I'm making a size small here and the seam allowance is included in the pattern and it's half an inch or 13 millimeters everywhere unless otherwise mentioned. There are three lengths built into the pattern, shorts, cropped, and floor length, and I've got the mirrored hem included there for you on the pattern. So with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, fold half an inch in or 13 millimeters and then two inches or five centimeters and press in place on the front and back pant legs. Pre-press the box pleat on the flower pocket by folding the outermost notch to the center notch. Do this on the two outer layer pieces of your flower pockets. For the bias binding prep, I want to give you a little demo of how the notches line up on the bias piece. So each notch is labeled and it corresponds to where it lines up on the overall bib slash armhole. The shoulder area is the only end of the pattern that has a notch in it. This is the end that we will attach together first. Then the shoulder strap interfacing piece 9, which is only the dotted area of the piece, will be placed over the front neck, back neck, and shoulder notches. And it will extend past the front and back notches. Okay, now it's time to tackle your actual fabric pieces. So make sure that you've included every single notch on this piece, otherwise it will get confusing very quickly. I do recommend pinning each notch with colored pins. I used red for the front neck, white for the back neck, and yellow for the shoulder notches. And when you separate your pieces, make sure that the pairs are mirrored like I am doing here. And just a note, strips that are cut on the bias will easily stretch, especially with a loose or weave fabric. So when in doubt, compare your strap to its pattern piece and adjust it to match. So the front and back bias binding together at the shoulder seam indicated on the pattern piece with notches and press open. Make sure that you are sewing this in a mirrored fashion so that the shoulder seams aren't slanting the same direction. Before applying the fusible interfacing, just make sure that your pieces side by side are lining up exactly. So if you place the seams right beside each other, they should make a V and then you want all the notches on the pieces to line up in the same way so that you have two mirrored bias strips in front of you. The fusible interfacing will overlap the front and back neck notches by about 5 8 or 60 millimeters. If it doesn't, your bias cut piece may be a little bit stretched out. Just compare it to the pattern piece and if it's a little bigger, readjust and then apply the interfacing on the wrong side. Cut a piece of half inch or 13 millimeter wide twill tape the same length as piece 9A and place along the edge of the area with interfacing. Place on opposite sides of each bias strip as shown and sew in place down the center of the tape. The interfacing and twill tape reinforce the shoulder strap areas so that they don't stretch out with wear. Again, I'm sounding like a broken record but you can see here that these pieces are mirrored and each end is the same length and looks like a V when they're together. That means we're doing everything right. I'm now moving my marking pins to the side without the twill tape. Next, press the bias strip in half lengthwise. Press the twill tape side of each bias piece towards the center fold. Then repress the center fold. You'll have about a half inch sticking out on the unfolded side. 
so that it looks like this. Now we come to the zipper. So with right sides of the front overall pieces facing, sew from the crotch to the zipper notch, back stitching to finish. Press open this seam. Apply the eight inch zipper to the opening. Line up the top edge of the zipper tape along the top edge of the front overall bib. Mark the notch placement on the zipper so that you know where it ends. Then sew each side of the zipper in place. So on each side, I sew the zipper right down to the seam, being careful not to go past that point. When both sides are done, pull the zipper end through so that the tab is on the outside and you have your zipper done. You can tack the tail of the zipper to the seam allowance of the center front seam. Next, sew the front facing pieces along the top of the bib with right sides facing. Apply twill tape along the sew line to keep the seam from stretching out over time. Fold all of the seam allowance to the facing and understitch on the facing. With the right side facing the zipper seam, sew along the zipper. Turn out and fold the completed facing to the inside of the garment and press. Stay stitch the facing at a quarter inch or six millimeters at the outer edge of the overall bib. So make sure that you have pre-pressed the creases of the box pleat on the right side of each pocket. Place your pocket pairs right sides together with the pleat unfolded. If your fabric is thick, you may want to use a lighter weight for the inner layer of the pocket. Sew around the perimeter at half inch or 13 millimeters. Start and stop with a back stitch at the notches on one side to leave a gap for turning it out. Trim the seam allowance down to a quarter inch or six millimeters, but don't trim where the gap is. This will make it easier to fold it in when turned out. Clip along the curves to allow them to sit flat when turning out. And just a tip, if you have pinking shears, you can use this on the outer curve of the pocket. And it's just really useful and helpful for those kind of curves. Turn out these pockets and press the edges, being careful not to press out those pleat folds. Make sure the gap is folded in nicely and press it. It will be enclosed when it is top stitched to the overalls. So using the pre-creased fold lines as a guide, fold the box pleat at the base of your pocket, press and pin in place. Sew the side pockets to the front and back side seams at their notches with a 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance, then flip out and understitch. So the out seam stitching around the pockets as well at the normal seam allowance, which is half inch or 13 millimeters, and then press the seam open. The pocket faces towards the front, so you can clip the back seam allowance just under the pocket and then it will allow you to lay it open and flat. It's time to add the flower pockets. Place the top edges of the pocket over your drill markings on the side of the overalls and pin in place. The pocket must lay flat and not stick up at all along the opening of the pocket if you don't want it to be super baggy and sticking out on you when you're wearing it. So starting at the top right pocket tip at about a sixteenth or two millimeters away from the edge, sew around the pocket and then sew across the squared tip and back down around at a quarter inch or six millimeters away from the first stitch and then end at the opposite pocket point, back stitching twice to complete. Sew up the center back crotch seam and press open. 
Apply the back facing along the top with right sides facing and a quarter inch or six millimeters wide twill tape added to the sew line. Sew the seam and then understitch. Turn out your facing, press it and lay it against the wrong side of the back overall bib and then stay stitch at a quarter inch or six millimeters. Next, we're gonna sew each inseam right sides together and press it open. After pressing open the inseam, fold up your hem according to its pre-creased folds and sew along the edge of the inner fold. Now for the binding application. Sew the remaining opening of each bias binding strip to create two loops. Press the seams flat. On the table, arrange each strap with a shoulder notch at the top. Those are pinned with a yellow pin. Then we have the front neck notch or the red pin towards the center. And then the back neck notch, which is pinned with a white pin to the outer sides. These are now in the correct orientation to apply to your overalls. So place your overalls in between them. So take note of the elastic notches on the front and back overall pieces. And I just use a piece of chalk to mark it one inch away from the edge of the fabric so that when I sew in the bias tape, I can still see where the notches are. Pin your bias binding in place, making sure that you're pinning the unfolded edge of the bias strap and matching the notches to the correct places. So again, the front neck notch, the red pin, it's matching to the top of the overall front. The side seam notch, which doesn't have a pin, will attach to the side seam of the overalls. The back neck notch, the white pin, matches to the top of the overall back. And then the shoulder notch marked with a yellow pin is not even pinned to the garment as it is a part of the shoulder strap area. And then sew your bias binding along the armhole. Then I want you to trim about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters of the seam allowance along the entire armhole seam that you just sewed. We're now going to add the elastic. The elastic is optional. It just kind of cinches in the waist a little bit, keeps it from gaping, but you can totally sew it without. At the side seam between the elastic notches, fold in the pre-folded edge of the bias binding, enclosing the seam allowance. Line up that fold just past the original stitch on the inside and pin in place. Top stitch just about a sixteenth of an inch or two millimeters from the seam on the right side of the bias binding, catching the fold at the back to create a channel for the elastic. Make sure that you start and stop at the elastic notch locations that you marked earlier and do this with a back stitch. Now determine your elastic length according to the notion chart, which is on page seven of the read first file and cut it in half exactly. On each side, using a safety pin or whatever you like to use, feed the elastic through the casing and secure it with a pin on either side. Make sure that the elastic ends are about a half inch past the ends of the channel that you created. This will give it enough room to sew over it and then not have it pop out when you're wearing it. Fold in the rest of the bias binding and pin everything in place and pin it well, pin it all in place so that when you sew, you don't miss the fold on the back. I have missed the fold a couple times when sewing this, so pinning a lot is the key for this step at least. So you can either just sew the ends of the elastics now and then just sew the rest of the bias binding separately, but to do it in one continuous swoop, I like to start by sewing across one side of the elastic about three times and then end your stitch along the inside edge of the bias binding. 
then pivot the fabric and line it up so that you can sew along the bias binding seam all the way around catching the inner fold as you sew and then you can pivot again when you come to the other side of the elastic and sew across the binding and enclose the elastic with a double stitch. And now with that final stitch, you are now done. So put on your overalls and go frolic in a field and fill your pockets with wildflowers. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to share this with me on Instagram at Lydia Naomi Studio and hashtag Meadow Overalls. I would love to see it and share it with everyone else. And also like this video and subscribe so that more people can find this awesome.